Well, good morning, magandang umaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today, we're going to go into a DIY episode. Uh, everybody who has a split aircon unit, uh, similar to the Mitsubishi Mr. Slim that I have here on the wall, eventually you're going to have to do some kind of maintenance to this unit. Uh, it's a fact of life. Uh, maintenance when it comes to cleaning, uh, when it comes to troubleshooting, and, and the like. So today, since this has been neglected for about a year and a half to two years, normally you would do maintenance on a regular basis, uh, cleaning filters and things like that on a monthly a monthly basis or, or every so often, when, depending on your use. Uh, but I've been away building Villa Feliz, so now I have to do all the maintenance of the items that are back here in our property in the U.S. Uh, this one right here, it's extremely dirty, and I will show you in just a little bit. Uh, plus some other preventative maintenance uh, measures that should be done uh, that you don't normally find on a lot of the uh, how-to uh, DIY videos here on YouTube as well. Uh, and we'll go into that into more detail in just a moment. So let's go ahead and uh, start getting uh, this maintenance action done on this split unit. Uh, so without further delay, let's get today's video underway. So what I want to talk about today is the difference between a lot of the maintenance videos that they give you, which is basically you open up this cover right here, you disassemble this little flapper valve for the air distribution, and you go and you do some minor cleaning in here. Well, when a unit has been neglected for quite a long period of time, there's a lot more uh, dirt and dust and mold and all built up in areas that you just can't get to just from opening up the cover and pulling off these, uh, these little airflow uh, directional um, assembly right here. So what we're going to do, we're going to do a full inspection and we're going to do a full uh, cleaning of this unit right here. So let's look a little deeper into the unit itself. Well, what people normally have you do is just do a minor cleaning. And a minor cleaning is you open up this cover right here. It's got a couple of clips on the outside. You lift it up. And this applies to most any of these split units uh, from different manufacturers. They're all basically the same, uh, but this is particular to the Mitsubishi Mr. Slim unit that we have here in our sunroom. Uh, you see there's a couple of filters inside here, and you see this flap. I'm going to show you how most folks will have you going in and doing the cleaning. So what they'll do is they'll have this, this should be done on a regular basis. This unit right here, you just lift up and you pull out two of these filters. You have this filter right here and you have another one out here. And what you do is you take these outside and you wash them down and you get them nice and clean. This is your first level of cleaning for the air that's being blown around inside your unit. This is like an intake filter right here. And you can see these are quite dirty. Uh, I normally did do maintenance on these on a regular basis, but again, we were down in the Philippines and we were building Villa Feliz. So there's been some uh, neglect to the maintenance on this unit right here. So we'll do that. This is still, it still has to be done, uh, but we're gonna go even a step further than that. Uh, so we'll end up pulling both of these off. We're going to clean both of those filters with some water, let the uh, filters dry out. And now what we're going to do, we're going to come inside here and we're going to do some cleaning, but we'll go do that a, a little bit later on because I want better access. Another thing is these, these uh, little flapper uh, uh, assembly right here for the airflow. Uh, this you can either be static, you can program them usually on your on your remote, and you can make them move up and down so that you get air distribution in different areas of the room that you're trying to cool off, or you can put it into a static position where it just flows into one area, uh, depending on your needs. Uh, well, this is very easy to, to remove, and, and I'll show you that uh, here really quick. Well, now to re remove this assembly right here, it's as easy as basically taking this unit right here, this little clip right here, and you pop it back, I'm going to put it back uh, because we're act I'm going to show you a, a better way of doing this if you're doing a full maintenance. You take that one, you have another one right here, you will pop back, and this one right here will just slide off, and this unit will come off. And you do these for both of these units. They have the same thing on both of those. But what we're going to do, we're going to remove this entire assembly because this assembly has a lot more area that needs cleaning behind it. And that's normally what you don't see in your normal DIY uh, service maintenance uh, videos here on YouTube. So first off, the easiest way to remove the entire front panel assembly 
is this has a couple of retaining screws inside behind these little plastic clips right here. This one actually has two, a lot of them have three. Uh, there's one here and there's one over here. A lot of them have another one in the center. So what we're going to do, we're gonna pop off these little clips here and then what we're gonna do, there's a Phillips screw in there, we're gonna pull that off and we're gonna remove this entire assembly off. And one thing you need to do before you get started on any of the disassembly or working on your aircon unit, make sure you turn off the power to the unit. So once you've removed the retaining screws, the clips the retaining screws, and we're just gonna go ahead and gently remove the cover itself. So you can see inside the cover, it's not too bad. We do have some mold and uh, built up inside here. This will be easy to clean. Uh, let's take a look inside the unit itself. Uh, as you can see, it's very dusty inside here. We'll use a vacuum cleaner and we'll use uh, a vacuum cleaner and a brush, something like a toothbrush to clean. Now this area we will do, you have to be very careful. This coil inside here is very easy to damage. This is very thin aluminum. This is the same type of a, uh, a radiator type of a device that you would have inside your car. Now I do notice through careful inspection that we have a little bit of corrosion over here. Uh, which tells me that after a certain period of time, this unit is going to have to be uh, removed and, and changed out for something else. Uh, there's not much I think that I can do to this right now. Uh, this is part of condensation getting on here, working with the copper piping, and we have a little bit of corrosion. Um, uh, it's, I, I wish this were actually a bit cleaner, but we'll, uh, we'll address that at another time. So since we have to get to a couple of pieces inside behind these, this uh, flow assembly right here, let's go ahead and remove these like I showed you before. So the next thing that we have to do, we have to be able to get into the area back by the drain pan assembly inside here and the little blower wheels. Uh, it's really dirty back then and I'll show you once we pull this out. Now this isn't a, connected by any screws or anything like that. There's just some clips inside here. It's fastened by clips and we'll pop these out. There's one in the center, one on the right, and one on the left. And we should be able to drop this assembly down to the right so that we can have access uh, to that area and also where the blower is. Now this one is full of water. It is clogged back over here, which is a good thing that we're doing maintenance on here right now. So let me get a little bucket so I can collect some of this water. So now with the drip pan setting aside, and this is the, the little pipe, the little uh, uh, pipe that goes out when it, this fills up with water from condensation. Remember, it's in normally up in this position, up inside here. The water rolls down and it goes to this little pipe and it goes through the evaporator tube outside of your house. Now, I'm going to I'm going to say that this needs servicing, and I will show you how to do some servicing on this as well. Uh, we have to get all the clogging material out of there, or what's going to happen is what's beginning to happen now is we are starting to get water dripping down inside here. And you can see the drips coming down now. So anyway, you can see this is horrible inside here. All this needs to be cleaned out here as well as the fan blower. Uh, so we're going to work on that. Now to remove the blower assembly right here, you will spin the blower until you find a, a gap inside here. And that will give you access to the screw. There will be a screw inside there. So you go inside and you will loosen up the screw inside there. That's the set screw. And then once you've loosened that screw, let me show you another spot that you have to remove a couple of uh, screws to be able to access the other end of the, the blower. And you can remove the entire blower and you can do a cleaning on it.
And if you come over to this side where you have the coil assembly, there are two screws over here. Some units have three, this one has two. Now let me get my filled screwdriver over here. So you will loosen up this one, you will loosen up this screw right here, and you will pull the uh, coil assembly back, and you see this is where the little bearing is that you can actually pull out the blower assembly. So that's what we're going to do next. Well, let's go ahead and take all the stuff outside. We'll use uh, some water and we'll use some brushes. We'll get all the parts clean and then we'll go back for reassembly. And then we have to go back and we have to clean out that drain tube. And now our very last step before we reassemble all the parts and do a functional check of the system is we need to clean out the evaporator drain, uh, the evaporator drain tube uh, to be exact. And the way we're going to, there's multiple ways of doing it. You have people injecting pressure in the top, sending it down. Uh, you have people going from the bottom, sucking out using something like a vacuum cleaner, which is what we're going to do today. There's multiple ways of doing it. Uh, whichever way works for you and, and is the uh, most convenient for you, that's what you you should do uh, and you find mo more effective um, but what I'm going to do if you look here the evaporator tube is that white tube down inside of there and that comes out from the back of our head unit and what it does is you have the the uh, the coil inside the evaporator coil it gets condensation it drops down into a trough it goes down this tube travels down a tube and it goes outside your house so it doesn't set up inside your house what happens after a while you get things like mold and mildew inside it and it builds up and it gets uh, it's, it's like an artery inside your body that's had too much cholesterol too much of that fatty fatty meat uh, uh, from all of that pig that you've been eating. <laughs> so anyway, uh, what you have to do is you have to clean it out every now and then. And what we're going to do today, we're going to just use a vacuum cleaner. We're going to hook up this wet vac, this dry wet vac right here. And we're going to hook the tube up to the other end and we're going to suck out uh, what we can. And there's uh, things that you can do also for preventive maintenance. There's actually things that you can pour down the tube and it keeps that nasty stuff from growing inside there. And it so let's go ahead and use the vacuum cleaner hose to try to pull out whatever type of debris might be clogging up uh, inside that evaporator tube. So we'll do that now. Now that the cleaning is done and we've cleared out the uh, evaporator tube and I think we're good to go. Now all we have to do is put everything back together in the reverse order that we removed all the components and then we'll do a functional check. All right now, now that we've got all of the maintenance done uh, and it all looks really good, we have to go back upstairs to the circuit breaker box and let's go ahead and turn the power on and then let's do a check to make sure everything is working properly and we didn't make any mistakes. Well, okay, we have cool air. It's working inside. Uh, we have maintenance, and that's good for probably another year for that type of maintenance. Remember, always check your filters, whatever the recommended, uh, the recommended uh, schedule is that you have inside your maintenance manual that comes with your unit. And I try to stick with that because the more that you take care of it in between, the less all that stuff, uh, the, the dust and uh, all the uh, nasty stuff will get back on the other areas like you saw today. But anyway, uh, Ness did help me a little bit today. She was on, uh, on the outside with the vacuum cleaner while I was forcing some water and some solvents through the evaporator tube. So thank you for that help today. And uh, if you have any more questions, just put questions inside uh, the comment section today and I'll try to answer them as much as possible. Remember, uh, this type of maintenance applies not just to the Mitsubishi, but for most type of the split uh, air conditioning units like this as well. So anyway, I'm gonna close for today on this episode. Remember, I still have a couple of raccoons that I need to catch, so I need to start preparing my strategy for tonight's capture of those raccoons. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up, please share, and if you have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream Heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed and you will be notified. Is, is she doing something behind me? I bet you she's doing something behind me. Uh, and you will be notified the next time I upload a new video. So until that time, you have a wonderful and blessed day.